Hey everyone, it's Federico here, and in today's video we're going to start from scratch with uh, OpenGL and make some audio reactive shapes. Um, from time to time I find myself remaking the same video, like this is a video I made already a couple of years ago, uh, but was long and kind of irritating myself if I look at it again, so uh, I thought, okay, let's reiterate, make a new version of this video updated, better, shorter, faster. The old version is still there, so we'll put a link in the description if you're curious about some um, some stuff. The, the previous videos goes a bit more in details, but uh, on this one I just want to go fast and get you started with making audio reactive simple visuals in OpenGL. So basically we're going to make a little sphere reacting to sound and, and see what else we can do, but just everything uh, very, very basic and very simple. So let's start. First of all, as you maybe know, maybe not, uh, in order to make some 3D visuals in Max, we need an object called Jit World, which basically creates an, an OpenGL context. Now, if you don't know, know what OpenGL is, I got a tons of videos about that. Uh, so check check them out if you're really curious. Uh, in any case, let's we need to give it a name kind of to bind all our 3D objects to this rendering context. So let's give it a name like my worldy, something like that. And the Jit world uh, takes a bunch of attributes. It takes a lot of attributes. Um, the first attribute we can give it is enable one, which makes it enabled by default, because otherwise we would have to switch it on using a, a number one or zero. Um, if we give it enable one, it means that it's always on by default. And then we give it, for example, uh, floating dot uh, floating one, which means that the window is always going to be on top of the patch, because otherwise, as you could see, the, the window was going below the patch every time I click somewhere else. And great, and then maybe some initial size for the window, like 320 by 240, there it is. Great, okay, let's start. Let's start with that. And uh, great, so let's create our first three-dimensional shape. It's always a great moment, so let's create an object called GGL Grid Shape, which creates a 3D shape, and it's going to be rendered in this little window that we just created with a JitWorld object. And uh, in order to kind of bind it completely to that rendering window, we can give it as a, the first argument and only argument the name of the world we chose for our JitWorld. So great. As you can see, uh, it should be a sphere. It's very big. So we can scale it down using the scale uh, attribute, which makes it uh, simply uh, sets its dimension. Of course, we can also set the scale attribute using a, a message box. <clears throat> so scale dollar one is going to um, send the message scale followed by whatever number we input, right? Amazing. So this is first. So this is uh, like a, an attribute that we could modify with some audio input, right? As you can see, I'm visualizing the message coming out from that other message by inputting it in the right inlet of a message box. That's some kind of fundamental property of message boxes. Uh, that's very important stuff to know. The build tutorials uh, within Max uh, make a great job in explaining uh, all the messages properties and all these kind of things. So we're not going to go through that in this video. Um, great, so we got the scale thing, uh, we got the color, for example, we could set the color of this uh, of this 3D object by sending it a message, for example, uh, um, in this way we are sending a message color followed by three uh, by four numbers. So as you can see, I connected a float number box in the second input. Why in the second input? Because the first input is the input that sets the first element in the list in the pack object, which is the name color. So if I will set another name here, Another word here, like ciao, this would be then the wrong message for the GGL grid shape because we will be outputting the message ciao. So in this case, we never need to modify the first element of this of the list in the pack object because we always want to send the message color to the grid. Right, good. So we can set with three float number boxes the color of this shape. The numbers goes between zero and one, and we get that the first element, the first number sets the red value. The second number sets the green value, and the third number sets the blue value, right? So we are the, the, the colors are set in the red, green, blue, and alpha uh, order. So the alpha being the transparency of the object. Right, we can of course set them also with sliders object. So we just have to create a slider. But the slider gives us a number between 0 and 127 because it's kind of fought for MIDI um, controls. So we can just divide the 
output by 127 in order to have numbers between 0 and 1. So we could also do it from the inspector, but then maybe you don't remember that we did it from the inspector, so it's always nicer to do it kind of in an explicit way. Right, so we can set the colors like that, for example. This would be red, this would be green, this would be blue. And then we can basically create all the colors possible by mixing together by additive synthesis the red, green and blue colors. Great. Um, cool. Uh, let's get now an audio input and start to mess a bit around with these, uh, with these values. So we can simply like drag and drop uh, some audio from the Max library. A drums loop uh, sounds pretty good and good we can output this uh, we can output the um, the sound using for example uh, easy duck this is the object called easy duck with a tilde of course and basically with that we can then create a live gain to kind of set the volume and uh, so now we can output I'm outputting this volume from the speakers right Hop, hopefully you can hear that um great so now we got some amplitude coming out from these uh, uh, signal cables right we got this this amplitude of the samples that are going to reconstruct the analog signal right so we can take this amplitude and um analyze it in some way for example we could take the average of a certain amount of samples and then use these to control our visuals and we can do that with the object called average so the average object makes the average of the amplitudes of a certain amount of samples that it receives now our visuals are rendered at a certain frame rate right because everything that must simulate an animation needs to be rendered at a certain frame rate so we can get the illusion of something animated in the case of the cheat world by default the object has a frame rate of uh, 60 frames per second it means it's rendering on the rendering window 60 frames per second and every time it renders a new frame it basically sends out a bang from its central output great so we can send out these uh, this bang from the cheat world and use it to basically control the animations of all our objects in our patch because we basically want to have a different animation for every frame so we want to have different values for the animation for every frame so at every frame we want to analyze a certain amount of samples get their average and then use this number to animate our visuals now how many samples should we um should we analyze so basically it makes sense to use an amount of samples, that is uh, how many samples we are outputting from our system in the amount of time that passes between each frame. So for example, if I created a DSP state object, this will tell us uh, what is our sampling rate. So if I create a bang, you can see that my sampling rate that I'm setting here into max, uh, that I'm using in max to output the audio is 44,100 samples per second, which means if we divide this number by 60, we will get how many samples we are outputting at each uh, frame, which is basically 735. So let's give to the average object 735 as an argument, which means at every frame, it's going to take the, the amount of samples that we output in the same amount of time that a frame passes, and we're going to get the average of those, amplitude of those samples, and then use it. So we can also choose um, an algorithm to, um, to analyze this, um, the amplitude, and I think I'm going to use the root mean square, which basically takes all the samples, uh, sums them, squares them, sums them all together, and then takes the root of this whole operation, and this gives us a nice, uh, smoother uh, kind of uh, envelope follower thing. We can check what's coming out using the scope object. Uh, let's see how it looks like. Cool. Uh, it looks like the envelope of the sound. So that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. We now just need to translate this into max numbers because by default, this is a... Uh, this, what's coming out of here is max signal msp data so we want to translate that into max numbers because um the the gtl grid shape object and all the 3d uh, objects basically they accept inputs only as uh, max numbers so we need to use an object to transform that we could use for example the snapshot object which takes a snapshot like a photography of the um, signal that is that it receives every time it receives a bang so we could use the bang coming out from our jit world 
to get the amplitude of those amount of samples in the frame. So basically, every frame we analyze this amount of samples and then we bang it out and we get what was the average amplitude for that frame. So that's, that's that should be pretty nice. And right, so we get these uh, as uh, max numbers. Great. We could then use that, for example, for, for to control some parameters of our GGL shape. For example, we can send it around using a sender and call it, for example, average uh, average frame amp, something like that. This is, an amp, this is a positive value because uh, you can see we're using the root mean square, which always gives us a positive value. So all number above zero, uh, which is great. We can directly use it that for the for the scale. Uh, now, some of you maybe may know that sending uh, senders and receivers is a bit slower than just touching um, objects with a cable, but we don't care at, about that at all at the moment. Uh, but if you want max, extra maximum performance, you can uh, you could connect those with a cable, but that would be a mess. So um, cool. As you can see, we are basically scaling our object using the amplitude of the sound, the average amplitude for every frame, uh, which is great. So the only problem now is that this is a bit too stroboscopic, like this object gets big and small uh, a bit too fast. So basically what we want to do is to kind of smooth a bit more the input signal in order to then have it uh, a bit smoother this transition. Basically we want to apply a low pass filter to the, to the input. So one way of doing that will be really just using a low pass filter, like for example, one pole with a very small value, like maybe four, which will filter all the frequencies above four, which basically just smooths the uh, smooths the, the signal we are receiving. Like if this was the signal before the one pole, that's the signal after the one pole, which as you can see is a lot smoother, which goes very well with how we want to uh, visualize our, our shape getting bigger and smaller. So that's okay. That's one way of doing it. It's actually fairly, fairly okay. Uh, we can, for example, multiply this number by something bigger. If we want the, the shape to get bigger, can maybe delete this uh, floating number. Otherwise, this will consume a bit too many resources in our patch. Maybe this as well. So let's see. Um, an alternative of using the pole, the one pole, so basically the filtering the audio signal is to filter the, the max. Uh, numbers, which we can do like, for example, using the slide object, which takes two values. Uh, the first is how much it should smooth when the signal goes up, and the second is how much it should smooth when the signal goes down. So we can see what happens. Yeah, it's much smoother, as you can see that with the one pole thing. So yeah, it depends how much smooth we... Uh, it, we, we could achieve the same result with the, the one pole, but this is kind of... Uh, it's kind of nicer, I guess. So yeah, we will go with the slide object which basically works at our frame rate, not at the um, MSP rate, which is also probably better to save some resources. So yeah, we are scaling our shape in a very nice way. Uh, the, the numbers never go too down, as you can see, because the slide kind of smooths uh, all the extremes, so the numbers also don't never go completely to zero. Great. Uh, another way we can do that is basically just saying once the audio values are above a certain threshold, then trigger some action. So, for example, um, yeah, we could do something like that. Let's first check what is the values that we're getting here. As you can see from the scope object, they never go really above 0.5 of amplitude. Actually, they don't even reach 0.5. So we could do something like that, even, even without the slide. We could do something like that when this is above uh, 0 0.3 or something then let's check what happens so basically we we get a 1 when this is above 0 0.3 we get a 0 when this is below 0 0.3 uh, the problem is that this is outputting numbers for every frame and is always outputting for example if the num the value the signal value doesn't go below 0 0.3 then it's continually outputting 1 uh, actually we can see that with a print object the problem is that it's continuously outputting those those numbers, even though we actually just want the um, to get the numbers only when they change because uh, we don't care about receiving multiple times the same value. So we can use a change object in between. Uh, so this is going to basically send us a one only when the signal goes from uh, a below this threshold to above the threshold, which is exactly what we want. 
So we could say, okay, when this is above the threshold, uh, send a bang, for example, and then we could uh, uh, send this bang around like uh, signal above threshold bang. I like very descriptive name for send and receives, as you can see. And then we can receive that here. And for example, we could trigger a random number every time this signal goes above the threshold. So we can uh, get a random that goes between 0 and 100. We can divide this by 100. So now it goes between 0 and 1. Uh, we can mu multiply this by 2 or something and see what happens. That's actually not multiplied by 2. And uh, let's hear with the sound. Good. So every time we have a peak in our um, signal, in our audio file, basically, uh, this is going to send a 1, which is going to trigger the random number between 0 and between 0 and 100, which we're going to divide by 100. So it's between 0 and 1. And then we use that to scale the shape. Maybe this threshold is too high. We can uh, make it uh, lower by, for example, putting 0 0.2. Right. Now it's a bit more. It's a bit better now. Maybe it's 0 0.15 even. Since our sound is so... Since our audio file is basically just a bunch of peaks followed by silence almost, then it's it's great to... We can also use a lower threshold. Okay, so this seems to be pretty cool. Uh, reacts pretty well to the to the peaks of the audio file. And this is just, of course, the beginning uh, of uh, creating our audiovisual concept. We could then modify the colors and so on of the shape and basically a bunch of other attributes that is shaped as if you right click uh, with the mouse on the input of an of a object of a max object you can see all its attributes and basically all of them can be modified by using some audio input so yeah i hope it was useful uh, if you have questions or suggestions or critics whatever just uh, let me know check my patreon page to get the patch for free and uh, check other patches that are not for free but are cooler and uh, see you in the next video ciao everyone